Well, hello everyone, and welcome to another episode of Beaumont Sumer, a city skylines experiment. I hope you enjoyed that little retrospective of the city. Hope you found it as enjoyable as I did. Now let's go ahead and see what we need to be doing here. Looks like right now the city is doing halfway decently. Needs to be making a little bit more money to be viable. Right now we're at about 194 simoleons a day. But that needs to be a couple of thousand to be nice and happy. $8,800 in the bank and a demand for some commercial property. Well, I think we can probably start to manage some of that. So let's get started. This little jaunty bit. <laughs> this diagonal connection from our future Michigan Expressway to the uh, to this this other roadway, which will probably be a parallel road of some sort. That's probably going to stay for the long term. So let's go ahead and treat it like a uh, member of the family. Ooh, and we just jumped into Busy Town. Excellent. We've now pop crossed the population threshold of three thousand. We've got a few extra options, and we can now put some tree roadways. That'll certainly help with the aesthetics and possibly with some of the pollution. Excellent. Also a couple of unique buildings that come out. We've got our winter market. A bunch of other ones here we probably need to work towards if we're going to go for them, but... Uh, Certainly can't hurt to try. All right, let's go ahead and get some commercial property laid out here. We will need to make sure we're on the up and up there, but we also do need to upgrade some of our other transportation features. Then glad to go to our two unit roadways, which are the normal roadways. And there's our handy dandy two lane road with trees. Now let's get some bike infrastructure because we will need to have some of that, especially along the waterfront. Let's see, where is our normal two lane? Our normal two lane street here, and let's see. Ah, there we go, our built in roadway of bicycle lanes. Now you might wonder why the main street did not get that upgrade and the biggest reason is if I'm honest bikes shouldn't be on the main street that's one of those uh, vehicular biking rules that is counterproductive to actually having bikes be a viable transportation option if you treat bikes like cars you have a lot of conflicts Give them some dedicated right-of-way, and you'll have many fewer conflicts. One of the big reasons why I like using pedestrian paths is they do allow for both bikes and pedestrians, which, I mean, in an ideal world, probably not the way you'd want to do it, but probably the most practical, unfortunately. Since right now we're going to just drop it off there and give it a little flare later. Uh, what the heck, we'll do a little flare now. And bring that up to meet our roadway. Got it. All right, 
let's get a little more of our industry built. We do need to have some functioning industry to have a functioning city. Ooh. Looks like we've got a conflict here. Let's see if we can mitigate it a little bit here. Kind of just adjust our viewing angle. And we're going to go to our highways. We're going to go below right past our traditional highways. And we're going to move up to national roads. Asymmetric or symmetrical? I think let's do symmetrical. This will interfere with our pedestrian walkways, so we will need to adjust those, but I think we can probably manage that. All right. And okay, if we hold the control key, we'll have access to the node itself. One click, and we have dedicated left turn lanes which looks to be exactly what we need here. All right, let's get our pedestrian access back and see what's next. Okay. So we already have the nodes made from earlier. We just need to As you can see, we can't get nearly as close as we were before, at least not naturally here. So let's Oop. wrong key, of course. Yeah, that's definitely not going to be our permanent solution there. So let's get across. Okay. I'm actually going to use the snapping tool so we're not gonna go too far out of spec here there we go we'll get out of the movement mod and we'll move on to our next piece Snapping into position on both sides. And there we go. That should go a long way in terms of helping things. All right. I think we need a little more modification because things are not quite as they should be. Let's get some yield signs in place. As for quasi deafened by the police car. Woo! <laughs> not what I was expecting. All right. Well, we're up to $600 a day, simoleons, whatever they want to call it. All right, now we're going to do a little connection here. I don't normally 
wouldn't normally want to do this, but given the nature here, we got a geographic feature that's going to make expansion a little difficult here. We need to turn off the guides there. Okay. And then I'm going to There we go, and voila. We now have an expanded area for development. I'm going to go ahead and use some of this for industry, of course. And we can use the other portion for commercial. All right. Just a little reconnoitering here of the city, the island we're going to be working with. All right, let's start. Let's get some more residential built here. And let's get our path put in before we build this time. We have that luxury now. go and just because we can we'll connect it up to there and there we go all right let's make sure our water's all set since we do have the extra money to start with we don't have to build in piecemeal All right. Got one little commercial spot and the rest we can do as residential. All right, in the meantime, let's see, we do have a trash problem. We do have elementary school problems. Well, what's going on in elementary school? It looks like it's in bad shape. Let's go ahead and just add one right here in our new little addition. That should help with these people. High schools are now available. Let's see here. They are a little larger. So they do, at least with this sort of setup, do require a little extra planning. But I don't have a walkway here, so let's put it right there. There we go. We've got a 1,000-person capacity, 600 people eligible. We should be in good shape. And in theory, 
we've just replaced the people that were displaced by those two houses being destroyed, so we should be in good shape there. What do we have for transportation options? Well, we will have buses when we get some more money. That's going to be a good option, at least to start with. And they do have trams. Looks like ferries are available. Taxis. A couple of transportation hubs, usually just the ferry, yeah, ferry and bus exchange. So those will be in good shape. All right. Of course, knowing me, I uh, set up the water without actually setting up the water. <laughs> there we are. And yes, the jog is expected. That uh, helps to do a little transitioning since this grid will ebb and flow. The way my mind works, grids always seem to work out best. Otherwise, I end up with a huge mess with horrible, horrible traffic. At least here, it's well organized. And when I get to mass transit, we start using trains and buses and subways and trams and monorails. It'd be a good way to transition right out of that area now. Looking at things right now, I'm kind of torn. Ah, it lost the button. That's the button. All right, so we have Myrtle Hills here, which is kind of the zone set aside for industry, for the wood industry. So I have currently have four expansions set aside that I could go for. I actually don't know how many I have available because I wasn't paying that close of attention because I don't usually expand this early, but thinking about it, I'm wondering if I would be better off expanding this way. It would allow me to extend the residential and waterfront neighborhoods a lot more organically. but with as much less impact, I think. Because coming this way just seems like you're kind of rushing towards the shoreline. This way we're filling in. So I think we're going to go ahead and do that. It's only $3,600, which is most of my income at the moment, but I think that'll work. As you can see, we've now ex added more expansion possibilities, but we're not going to focus on those right now. We're going to grab some roads and we're going to expand towards the freeway. So we'll put the freeway to the south, to the bottom of the, excuse me, the bottom of the screen, which as you saw earlier was actually north. Still very much used to the old SimCity 4 setup where north was by default in one direction. This seems to not come across that way, but we'll see. All right, let's get a, we're gonna do something a little different here. We're gonna grab a, let's see, I've got bikes down here. There we go. We're gonna take a bike road. And we're gonna expand right off of this main drag. Now I told you before, I don't like taking bikes on the main drag. Well. In theory, this won't be too long. All right, so we come out our 11 units. And I'm gonna start expanding. So there's 40, two, three, four. Okay, and of course not enough money, but we can get that taken care of. The next thing I want to do though is I want to come out here. Ah, we have an old 
Looks like an old homestead, so we're going to avoid building on it. We'll actually end up making that a park at some point. So right now we just are going to set up a handy dandy little marker here because we're going to build inside. There we go. And That's good. Let's go ahead and start filling this out. Residential, zoned. Only need 440. We're at 220, 297. Think about it. there we go got it all right now we have a problem already well i think technically we have another problem looks like we're i don't know traffic actually cleared up we had a short little burst of a traffic back up here but i think that's self-cleared I'm going to go ahead and set those up like so. Our road's going to come up through here. All right. Yeah, I'll put a little bit of commercial there. We actually looks like we can build commercial all along this roadside and kind of hide the park because it'll end up being accessed a different way, I believe. thing we can do while we are waiting for some build up is we can add a couple of nodes places where we need some crossings all right Those index out of rangers are new, but they don't seem to be causing any problems at the moment. I'll go ahead and add a couple of crossings here. The joys of playing on some on a new platform. Not everything may be up to speed. I know OBS certainly isn't at this point, but it should be soon if everything goes according to plan. And then hopefully these streams will be much more buttery smooth. All right, and. Now, I know it seems like these are kind of pointless, but the idea is I get the, if you notice, I'm not, at least I'm not seeing pedestrians crossing these side streets any place without a crossing. So while it may not show up on screen, 
there's definitely a node crossing there for the pedestrians. On top of that, this also gives me the opportunity to get things prepped for when the roads get upgraded, because I highly doubt these roads will stay in this configuration forever, regardless of what I may want to have happen. Traffic may just dictate something else. And yeah, it looks like a couple of these nodes did destroy some homes, especially on the curvy sections of road, but we'll not need to worry about that, I don't think. All right. Let's come back to our handy dandy roadway. Let's get ourselves some more residences here. Give ourselves the space so our road expansions aren't going to be too disruptive or destructive. I'm going to actually cover that up a little bit. One, two, three, four, five. One, one, two, three, four. Two, leave a space. There we go. Go ahead and clear that one out, and we're going to add some commercial because we do have some commercial demand coming in, which is to be expected. You're not, as in real life, you shouldn't expect people to travel miles out of their way to get essential services, and commerce is an essential service, especially when you get mom and pop stores, grocery stores, and the like. Oop. So we're going to get this filled in here. And I'm going to actually fill in this portion with some commercial. I'm going to fix that one with a residential spot. And I'll put some residential in here. And watch as things rebuild. We don't need to worry about these too badly, but they are in good shape. And more residences here. All right. Well, the city is coming along here pretty well. Traffic is still at 83%. As you can see, we've got a little, a little pressure here, a little pressure over here. Those are both to be expected. This one I can probably do a little alleviation on here. Just takes a tiny modification, and I might have enough money to do it with, in fact. Okay, I'm going to pause for a moment here. go and then we're gonna go with some two-lane highway just like so now of course this is already occupied because of the 
angle at the bottom. So we're going to go ahead and do that. Use Traffic Manager to go ahead and correct the lane usage. And we'll do the same over here. Now we do probably need to correct the yielding situation. Because every time we make a change in traffic manager and then go change the roadway, it often resets things. This time it didn't. Okay, that's a good sign. It would be nice to be able to set priorities per lane so these left turn people would actually yield. But can only do as much as the tools we have, and unfortunately the tools we have have to deal with what Paradox actually deals with inside of the game, or Colossal, I can never remember which one actually wrote the game, which one's publishing the game. If you, if you remember, enlighten me please. <laughs> Make this go a whole lot easier. Uh, but let's see what we have going on here. Alright, traffic seems to be clearing up. Happier, happier, happier. All right, now we've got water problems. Why do we have water problems? Probably because we don't have the water pipe pulled far enough. Yep. We'll pull it all the way to there. Ah, uh, we got some buildings leveling up. That's a good sign. But we also have water issues because I'm not providing enough. And I knew that already. We're going to just go ahead and expand the zone here. And because I can, I'm going to put a work zone down here for trees. Sometimes you get a satisfying click, sometimes you don't get it such a satisfying click. I can never remember when I should and when I shouldn't, so. All right, we're going to just leave that nice little <laughs> enclave, I guess you want to call it, of not quite great places there. Let's get our commercial zone expanded here. At least the... Uh, special underlying zone we have. There we are. All right, it's going to try to upgrade. We don't want upgrades. We want to get an actual roadway here. Got it. All right. Now, let's go ahead and get our industry updated. And we are going to use the treed roads. It does seem to be the best thing to do here. All right. Now we're out of money for a few minutes. So we can go ahead and zone, which thankfully doesn't cost any money whatsoever. Now, if you notice, I do have a zone, a zonable area right alongside the freeway. That's going to be dense residential when that becomes available. We'll 
which won't be for another couple of hundred people at least. Yeah, we got a 4,200. We're at just a little over 40. No, we're a little over 4,000. Okay, there we go. 4,071. 4,091, we're getting there. I do see we have a fire, but that's not of major import at the moment, I don't believe. And it got handled by our handy dandy fire department now one of the things we're going to do is we are going to have to set aside a piece of road here as a connection between our residential community and the industrial community over this freeway which will eventually Michigan Expressway so we're going to go ahead and pre-zone that as commercial We will later upgrade the roadway, and that'll probably end up being a road with bus lanes, which may also mean we end up eating into our buffer here for our pedestrian walkway. Depends on what I can find. Because one of the things that would make <laughs> makes life a whole lot more difficult is if we were to try to make all of these residences drive all the way through town here, and then back over to here, and then up this little freeway section and then across or later through whatever sort of complex interchange I decide to build here ooh we are losing power why are we losing power let's go find out ah well we're losing water because we're losing power we're losing power because well we're literally losing power so let's see do we have I don't have turbines available yet and I'm nine people short from a nice little monetary boost do I have any headroom in the budget? Just barely any. Four, three, A, there we go. Busy town. Excellent. That'll make life a lot easier. We've got toll booths, we've got health care additions. Let's go ahead and we're going to utilize our handy space here where we don't have to deal with people. One of the joys being able to build outside the city. So if everything goes according to plan, there's some electricity. There we go. Right in the river. We now have plenty to work with. Now these we will want to leave, these trees, because this is a forest specialization, so. All right. So that is where we're going to leave that section. So we are going to make an overpass to get over to the residential community. In just a few moments. First thing I'm going to do, though, is I want to get some stuff pre-planned and pre-built and growing. So we're not going to run into any sort of issues, I hope. I 
will have a water issue here in just a moment, but we will be prepared for that. In fact, it looks like we are prepared for that. And I'm going to put in some dense commercial here. Let me go. Dense residential, dense residential. We're actually going to break it here. All right, still set to ground. Let's go ahead and set that to normal. We go there's our little bridge okay we're gonna need to get some water pipes constructed here all the way across and up and over to there That should make everyone happy, I hope. And delete this little vestigial tail from the old water tower. Ah, look at that traffic flow. That's doing very well. All right, we're gonna get some, actually see, do we have any industrial roads? Are they actually useful through here? Probably not, but we'll see. Oh. Yeah, for you they are because they're cheap. <laughs> At least from my understanding, they're cheap. So let's go ahead and get those put in. Tree line streets from here to here. Okay, that's not going to work. But let's get these upgraded alright well one of the things I've discovered playing the game over the years is when we get to this section of having high density we actually have to take advantage of it pretty quickly in order to ensure that the city continues to survive if we don't do a significant portion at least of the residential things seem to die and We do need to put in offices, because if we don't put in offices, it will die. All right, now, let's get some offices in here, and in there, and in there. All right, good. That will be happy. Get a nice little office building over here. Little office building constructed here. Right now, all demands are flat, and that's usually the case for a little bit here. The game is still trying to figure out what I'm trying to do here, in theory. All right. Perfect. And 
a whole section here of no residences. Well, let's go ahead and clear those out. We'll go ahead and put in some high density and we'll see what happens. All right, we are complaining about power connections, but I don't think we need that anymore. Go ahead and fill some of these spaces in with commercial. looking pretty good. What happened to my zone? That's interesting. we go. We got our zone back. Put our dense residential here. We will probably need a connection from this dense res or from this residential zone across and we'll probably run that right up through here. That looks like it's a good spot. Go ahead and expand our roadway here. Get down to ground level. Excellent. Of course, as we get over here by the freeway, these will be bigger buildings. There's a few crisscrossing here between zoning types for a little bit. There we go.
gonna take a minute for everything to kind of catch up, I think. And yes, I know we're not gonna get any commercial buildings out this way yet, but it's good to plan ahead, I think. Looks like I can plan ahead here. And we can take down our trees. Just delete them all. Those two bulldoze. Bulldoze. And bulldoze. All right. Of course, a few trees staying behind, not a big deal. It does just make this whole process a lot easier. What is our traffic percentage at? Eighty three. Okay, we're still in good shape. Do we have the money for a bus depot yet? No, we're going to need thirty thousand. Of course, we are. How is the education component? It's starting to come down a little bit. Gra trash is another thing we've got to deal with still. What's our loan looking like? We still owe <laughs> 260 weeks left. Of course it is. But we got four grand now. That's a good sign. Monetary income is starting to increase. We could probably, thinking about it, what is our power situation at? Oh, we can probably bring down our budget for power significantly. We're going to go to 100% on that. What about water? We are, going to get, we are going to need to get some more water incoming here. But in theory, this will help some. What is the going rate for a water pump? They are currently $2,500. And what about the... No, they are 17. And they give us 38, 384,000 cubic meters. 
And these give us 120 cubic meters. 120,000 cubic meters, I mean. There we go. That should get us some more water. Which will actually do two things. We'll have enough water in the overhead that we can cut back on costs, which actually may save us money in the long run. Because now if I go to water, we're pegged. If I cut back to 99%, we're still mostly pegged, at least on the uh, freshwater side. That brings us down to not quite what we want. Let's get us back to, let's just go to 100%. That'll be good. All right. Let's see, where's our five by two? There we go. There we go. I did say I was going to put a park over here. Didn't say what kind of park. That would be a good place to start, though. And then because I can... Use that as an access park to get to the rest of the walkways. And I know, I messed that up. We'll get that fixed, like so. like so We'll come out of the back side and head right over to here. We'll just come straight across there and there.
Ooh, that's not what I want right there. What are you doing, my friend? We don't want you intersecting with the road. That's the exact opposite of what we want to have to do. <laughs> oh, great. Suddenly I'm Matt Gray. That's not how boats is. All right. Those are set, and then we're going to set that, and that I know you were constructing, but I don't really care. Oh. Come on. There we go. Stop at road. There we go. I think we have it for now. We'll see what happens in a few minutes. But pedestrians seem to love love these walkways. I'm gonna go ahead and let the city do its thing for a few minutes. See what happens. Oop. Spoke too soon. We got a rock. I don't know what it is, but that's like the single most annoying thing in this game is build a city, build a road. Hey, it clears everything out of the way except the rocks. <laughs> All right. And actually, because we can. That is going to be part of the city eventually. Anyway, let's Ah. That should help significantly and keep noise down.
Hey, we got a small city. Excellent. Trains, monorails, cable cars, high-rise bands. That'll all be handy to have. And 54 grand. Well, the 54 grand, we can go ahead and start our bus depot. Put it over here. Now we can go ahead and start filling out our bus lines. All right, there's our first loop. So I have an automatic system for randomizing the colors and the names. That seems to come in quite handy. What we do want to do is we want to select the types of vehicles we're going to do. We're going to just use the Sound Transit Gillings. All right, new line. New line's going to be a little bit more ambitious. Now, right now, it's going to be going through this little U-turn loop. As roads are expanded and changed, that will be undone. These will be BC Enviros. Now, one of the things I do need to do is we do need to, those are correct. And BC Flyers. Yeah, the cost for running buses in this game is f far outstripped by the reality of running buses in in life. All right, we'll see how that goes. That should help with some traffic in theory. One thing I am going to do is I am going to run a run a special line from right about here. Come into this part of town. And you know what? It's going to go right back the way it came. It's going to have a stop right there and it's going to loop around and be done. And that one I want to use the rainbow bus if that's an option here. Yes. A Hawaiian rainbow bus will be all set then. Why aren't my buses in use? Oh, because I only have it on one.
Well, we'll see what happens. I've not encountered this before, but we'll see if that's just a hiccup. And we'll see some buses moving shortly. Oh, yes, that's going to be our park has no power. That's to be expected. Because we haven't built anything out that way yet. I guess if you build it, he will come. Well, uh, it is pretty accurate in this case. Cut down on some traffic noise with some offices out here. Get some residential going. Get some commercial going. Nice little mix here. We'll see if that will help corral things a little bit. People are still streaming into the city, it looks like, so that's a good sign, I hope. Do need to take care of the trash problems. Let's go ahead and get those, get one of those built here. Next bus in infinity seconds. What the heck is going on here? Guess we'll just have to see here. But you know what? We are near the end of today's session. Let's get a few more roads set up here, and for all we know, it's a minor aberration in the program. Extend the water line so that we can actually have functioning water. We'll go ahead and extend our water line that direction.
looks like we'll actually call it a day right there. Well, this has been another episode of Beaumont Sumer. I hope you enjoyed it. I certainly enjoyed sharing my playing style with you. As always, I'm always open for feedback or questions. And I hope to see you again soon.